determines whether we're going to believe that God can handle our situation or not. So I'm hoping that by looking at these different names that are given to us in Scripture of God, that we can kind of expand our concept of God. And hopefully we can look at God from a new and an expanded vantage point. We need to enlarge our concept of God today. Here's a question I think we all need to ask ourselves this morning. How big is my God? How big is your God? Psalm 9 and verse 10, I love it. It says, those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Those who know your name trust in you. You see, names, those who know your name, when he's talking about that, I think he's, you know, he's telling us we need to understand God. We need to understand what these names of God that are given to us in Scripture so that we can have a, a, a greater concept of who this God really is. Names in Bible times were expressions of character. They were qualifications of a person to whom they were applied. In other words, names had meaning. They were given meaningful purposes. It's not like today. Our first daughter, we gave her name Nicole. You know, it's a pretty common name, Nicole. Then we thought we'd start getting cute. So we'd start coming up with different names. And for our son, we named him Kellen. And it actually, it came after we, we heard it from Kellen Winslow from the NFL. A big tight end. And then we named our, our uh, daughter, our, our second daughter and third child, Kedra. Now she's been called everything. <laughs> Kendra and what have you. But what I'm saying is today our names don't really mean a whole lot. We just, you know, we, we name our kids what we think sounds cool. But God's names are meaningful to us. The number of names given uh, to God found in scriptures, I think is perhaps the best example of this meaningful purposes for names. The names of God are revelations or descriptions of him. And they reveal the very distinctive attributes and characteristics of his person. It tells us who he really is. God reveals himself in a very unique way through the names that are given to us. We've already talked about in this series the thought that the names of God all answer a very direct need or fear that man has. All of these names will answer a need or a fear that we have. The fundamental idea expressed by these names of Jehovah show to us the very, I think, the very strong desire on the part of God to become all that is necessary for the happiness of his creatures, for the happiness of you and me. And his very name expresses his desire to meet our needs and our fears head on. Okay, so we've already talked about four of those names of Jehovah. I think we spent a couple weeks on, on, on two of them, and, and the second sermon was a couple of weeks. But we talked about Jehovah Shema, which means, do you remember? God is there, one person. Thank you. All right. I love it. And then the second one is Jehovah Shalom. What does that mean? God, our peace. Then Jehovah Rahi. That's God, our shepherd. And then Jehovah Rapha, which is what? I'm glad you're here this morning, Cindy. Thank you. Again, we look at these names given to God in Scripture and hopefully it will enlarge our vision and our concept of who God really is. Hopefully we all begin to see aspects of God that maybe we've never even seen before or at least we've maybe forgotten about or haven't thought about for a long time. So, here's another name given Jehovah in Scripture that I would like us to look at this morning. And that is Jehovah Jaira. What does that mean? Provider. Provider. See, you knew that before I even had to tell you. Remember I said sermons are reminders? Not necessarily learning new things constantly, but they're reminders. And today I would remind you that God is Jehovah Jaira. 
He is our provider. It means uh, God my provider, and it's found in Genesis 22:14. We read this. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. Or in other words, in the, in the Hebrew, it was Jehovah Jireh. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Jehovah Jireh means the Lord will provide. So this name of God obviously answers the fear that man has that all of our needs are not going to be taken care of. We fear that. That's why everybody goes out and buys toilet paper <laughs> and hand towels. Because we think our needs aren't going to be taken care of. Luxuries we can do without, right? Well. <laughs> but the thought of being able to provide for the basic necessities of life for our families, I think, strikes a chord of fear in every person who is the head of the family. We earnestly desire to know that our needs are going to be taken care of, that our family's needs are going to be taken care of. And God reminds us in Scripture that He is Jehovah Jireh. He's going to take care of us. He is our provider. He not only provides the physical things that we need, but he also provides stability. He provides encouragement. He, he provides strength. He provides whatever we need in our lives. Even in challenging times, he knows how best to provide for us. Think about it this morning. We've already talked about Jehovah Rahi, which is Jehovah, our shepherd. This morning we're talking about Jehovah Jireh, our provider, you look at both of those things, he's our shepherd, he's our provider, you know what, Psalm 23 is right, we shall not want. In other words, we shall not uh, have want of anything, because he is going to be with us, he's going to provide for us, he's going to take care of us. Missionary Hudson Taylor, if you, some of you read, read some stuff about him, he had complete trust in God's faithfulness and God's provision. He wrote this in his journal, and I quote, He said, Our Heavenly Father is a very experienced one. He knows very well that his children wake up with a good appetite every morning. He sustained three million Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years. Think about that. That was amazing. We do not expect he will send three million missionaries to China but if he did, he would have ample means to sustain them all. Depend on it, he says. God's work done God's way will never lack God's provision. Man, if we could just learn that. God's work done God's way will, all, will never lack God's provision. And then I was reading <clears throat> recently where another missionary, and this one was from Poland, was struggling financially. They were, they were struggling uh, great deal. The dollar had plunged in value and they lost about a third of the value of their money. And they were wondering if they were going to have to return back to the United States. So they were, they were praying for God's provision. And a small example of how God began to answer that took place in just, just a few days, short days later. In, in Poland they were having the potato harvest and uh, one day one of the trucks lost a bag and it spilled out over the gravel road right in front of the house of the missionary. And the missionary said, you know, we weren't starving, but some of those potatoes provided for our evening meal thanks to the Lord's provision, Jehovah Jireh. Now some people might think, well, that was just a coincidence. I don't think so. There, I think there are a lot of things that we could call God incidents, right? Sometimes we don't even realize God's provision until sometime later we look back and we think, man, alive, God provided for us. He provided for me. I'll bet every one of you, I'm not a betting man, but if I were, I'll bet every one of you could give some illustrations of God in incidences in your life. God is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. And I think we need to be constantly thankful for his provision in our lives. How many times have we asked God for something and we've gotten it and we forgot all about thanking him? We just go on our merry way. You know, God took care of our need and we don't even take time to say thank you, Lord. I think about that when I'm driving. 
You know, we oftentimes, if you're like me, I grew up with it, my dad, every time we got in the car and go on a trip, my dad would stop and we'd pray for traveling mercies, you know, for safe travels. But I've kind of been convicted of the fact that I, I kind of carried on that tradition. If just in my own mind, I'll pray, you know, Lord, to give, give us a safe trip today and whatever. And then when I get to the location, I just forget about the fact that God brought me there safely like I asked him to. And so I think we need to take time to just be thankful when God does provide for us, when he does meet our needs. We need to constantly be thankful for his provision. And we, we, we can say like the psalmist, the Lord is my shepherd. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. I shall not want. In other words, I shall not have lack of anything that I need. All right, so here's another name for Jehovah. And that is Jehovah Sidkenu. Now, that's a little different name. Uh, some of you probably that's not quite as familiar as some of the other names that you might have heard already. But it means God our righteousness. Jehovah said Kenu, God our righteousness. And this, again, is not quite as familiar, but it's a great characteristic for us to come to understand about God and who God is. We find this, <coughs> excuse me, we find this name in Jeremiah chapter 23. In verse 6, it says, In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. The Lord, our righteousness. In other words, Jehovah Sidkinu was the Hebrew word, a name. I think we all know that we can do nothing to make us in, have a right standing before God. We can do nothing on our own. But God has provided himself as our righteousness. And it's our acceptance of him that assures us that we are going to be in the right with God and literally have the hope of everything that God has for us, including eternal life. We naturally have the fear of being in the wrong. Some people have more fear of that than others. But just we have the fear of missing out on what God has for us here and now, and for sure, what our, even what our future or our eternity holds. And this is where God has stepped in, folks, and he has become our righteousness. God desires more than anything to make us right in standing with him. And that's where Jesus stepped in, and he actually blazed the path of righteousness for us. Jesus is the beginner and the completer of my faith. Jehovah said Kenu means God is my righteousness. I don't have to worry about being right all on my own. I don't have to worry about trying to live a perfect life on my own. I just have to accept his righteousness into my life. He becomes my right standing. I love, I don't know about some of you, if you've heard him before, but I love some of the quotes that are, uh, attributed to Yogi Berra, the old Yankee catcher. Just some great quotes. And I don't know if all of them were actually Yogi quotes, but I like to think they were. But here's one that's attributed to him. If you don't know where you're going, you'll wind up somewhere else. <laughs> Isn't that true? <laughs> some people, you know what? Some people are trying to get to heaven on their own by being a good person. But the only righteousness that is real, folks, and that will get us anyone, anywhere, especially get us to heaven, is what Jesus Christ has already done for us. We often hear of people being devout. You know, we say, we, well, so-and-so is a very devout whatever, okay? Uh, but this morning, I would challenge you with this, that there's, there's a big difference between being devout and being righteous, Often, oftentimes people are referred to as devout. Those people are trying to do things on their own to earn a right standing before God. They're trying to do all the right things. They're devout. But Scripture tells me I can't do anything to earn a right standing with God on my own. 
All that needs to be done for me to have a right standing before God has already been done by Jesus. God has made the way for us to have a right standing with him because he is God, our righteousness. He is Jehovah Sidkenu. Now, granted this morning, true righteousness is a God-given gift. God gives us that gift. We use the term uh, justification. It means just as if I'd never sinned. God gives us that gift of, of, of righteousness, a right standing with him. But the fact is this morning, we also have to strive to live righteously as well. That's not quite as fun, is it? That's not quite as happy a note there. But we have to strive to live righteously. It's not enough for me to just accept the gift that, that God has given to me. We need, I need to strive to be like Jesus. We need to strive for this right kind of living. Jesus has made us right before God, and we have received that gift of standing righteous before God. Not because of what we have done, but because of what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. But we are still to strive to be righteous in our actions, in our words, and in our thoughts. In the summer of 1908 or 9, uh, Sir Ernest Shackleton and three companions attempted to travel to the South Pole from their quarters. And they set off, they set off with four ponies that were going to help carry the load uh, during that trek. Well, weeks later, their ponies were dead. The rations had been all but exhausted. And they turned back towards their base again without their goal being accomplished. Altogether, they had trekked 127 days. On the return journey, as Shackleton reported in his journal, the time was spent talking about food. Elaborate feasts, they talked about. Gourmet delights. Sumptuous menus. You know, just like Cindy's menus. <laughs> i got to give you a plug because you helped me out earlier in the week, okay? <laughs> Well, as they staggered along, they suffered from dysentery, not knowing whether they were going to survive or not. Every waking hour, he said, was occupied by thoughts of food and eating. Now, that sounds rather strange. You're starving, and so you keep your mind focused on food. But hunger can do some different things to us. Hear me this morning. Remember when Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness? I think we can kind of maybe begin to understand a little bit of what Shackleton was talking about with their obsession of food. And it offers us, I think, a glimpse of the passion that Jesus intends for you and I in our quest for righteousness. Are we hungering and thirsting after that righteousness? All right. You got that one down now, right? Jehovah what? Come on, somebody say it. Sid Kenu. All right. Let's look at one more name of Jehovah this morning. Jehovah Nissi. Not Sissy. Nissi. This might be another name quite, not quite as familiar as some of the other names of God, but it's important nonetheless. And this main name means God our victor. Some, some translate it God our banner or God our rallying point. This name is found in Exodus chapter 17, verses 14 and 15. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered, and make sure that Joshua hears it, because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner, or Jehovah Nissi. See, people down through the ages have always had the need for a rallying point. For a banner to, to, you know, to rally under. A cause for which to join forces. And I'll tell you this morning, folks, God is our rallying point. He is the one that we need to join forces for. God's desire for us is that he be that rallying point. 
that we all join forces with him as the head leading us. And in the midst of any trial, God promises to be my stronghold. He promises to be my sustainer. His presence protects me when Satan's old fiery darts are are thrown at me of fear and doubt. Jehovah Nissi, God is my victor. He is my rallying point. He is the banner under which I rally with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Now the background of this name, Jehovah Nissi, involves the Israelites wandering in the desert after leaving their bondage in Egypt. And along the way, they were attacked by the the Amalekites, a powerful and a warlike group of nomads. And as the battle commenced, if you remember the story, Moses stood on the top of the hill where he could see the armies down below fighting. And he held his hands up with with the rod of God, the same rod with which he had struck that rock to bring forth water for the people in the desert. And this battle was an unusual one because as long as Moses held his hands up or people helped him hold his hands up, uh, the Israelites were winning. But when his hands were down, the Amalekites were winning. Well, as, as the sun set, Israel defeated those Amalekites. And after the battle, Moses built this altar and he called it Jehovah Nissi. The Lord is my banner. And I think the strange way in which that battle was won leaves us no doubt as to who was really responsible for that victory. The battle wasn't won by military might. It wasn't won by superior battle plans. But it was won by the power of God. They fought under the banner. The hands and the rod of Moses were held up in the same way that soldiers hold up flags when they go into battle. And these flags bear the insignia of their country. And the soldiers are said to fight under that banner. The Israelites fought under the direction of God, Jehovah Nissi. And it was under the Lord's banner and with his aid that they fought and in his name and strength that they conquered. And the naming of that altar, Jehovah Nissi, is a reminder to us all that we can be victorious, folks as we honor the name of the Lord and as we rally to him under that banner. We have a rallying point. So let's not forget this morning that Jehovah Nissi is our banner that we fight under. He is our rallying point. We're only going to win individual or corporate battles or struggles under that banner, folks, because God is our victory. He is our victor. Aren't you glad this morning for who God is? All of these things that we've been talking about, all the names of God. And next week, the Lord willing, I want to finish up this series, and I'm going to talk about four of them. So don't worry, it won't go real long. Uh, we'll keep it at a, at, a good, at a good length. But just think of these names of God and for what he does for us on a daily basis. On a daily basis. I hope we can all come to better understand this Jehovah God that we serve, and all that he is, and all that he can do for us. And all I can say this morning is praise his name. Praise his name. Father, I just thank you.